Um, so now that he's reached out there, it's a perfect uh, uh, time to, inv uh, to welcome onto the panel uh, Adi Godridge, who is of course one of India's most respected um, industrialists. Mr. Godridge, I think most of the voices that we've heard so far are saying individual policies naturally and obviously we are going to be looking at them, what he's doing on tax, what he's doing on subsidy, what he's doing on the fiscal deficit. But as much as anything, we are looking for him to tell us something and give us signals and then stand by them which makes us have faith in and confidence in the government's credibility. Yes, I totally agree. I feel it's very important. The message that will be sent in the budget speech this year will be very important. Confidence is low. Credibility is low. And he needs to uh, get that up to a level which can stimulate investment. I think investment incentives should be brought in the exemption limits for uh, income tax for people for investment in uh, for mortgage payments and other such payments should be raised very considerably not by small doses but by considerable doses the economy needs that kind of an impetus i would particularly like to see him lay down a clear path on how quickly he can bring the goods and services tax in because that is going to be the single most important stimulus uh, the economy can get. So it is very important that GDP growth uh, incentives, GDP growth policies are clearly enunciated in this budget. Can I ask you a yeah. Mr. Godin, if uh, how will the industry uh, react if, uh, if, if to achieve fiscal consolidation, the government imposes taxes on the industry? Uh, now, will you look at it as a larger uh, uh, reform, uh, di directionally uh, uh, reform measure, or will you look at it narrowly as a tax imposed on the industry and therefore a negative outcome? Uh, Adi, Adi, before you answer, I just See, want to we add should, on we should distinguish between. We should I, sorry, Adi, I just wanted to tax tag on rates to and taxes. I believe tax collection should increase clearly to uh, make sure fiscal consolidation takes place. But it's not always higher tax rates that lead to more tax collection. Sometimes higher tax rates can lead to lower collection because it has a negative eff effect on but economic Mr. growth. In, in the short run, uh, to address the immediate problem, the government could look at higher excise, what is, which is what is being expected. So no, you're I'm right, in a, in a more medium term, uh, Ex they can... Uh, excise duty hikes and service tax hikes at this stage, I think, will be negative for the economy. The eco so e economy the is choice. going Let's through difficulty in growth terms, and this is not the time to raise excise duties. We should just wait uh, till the goods and services tax is brought in, because tax collections will rise dramatically when the goods and services tax comes in. So Adi, quickly, here's a question to you right now, that if two mm -hmm. things were there, if there were very good investment incentives like investment allowances like before, uh, and you start introducing those, and some incentives for infrastructure, but you also got the SENVAT back to 12%, and the service tax rate back to 12%, would you consider it a good budget or a bad budget? Well, it depends. If the incentives are considerable and it will lead to considerably higher investments and growth, then perhaps it could be accommodated. But I think the most important <coughs> thing we need to do is to see that all the policies announced today go towards GDP growth because that's the most important objective uh, our economy should have right now. Mr. Mr. Kanoria, let me throw that same question to you because, look, everyone says there has to be fiscal co consolidation. Everyone says you have to try and get the fiscal deficit down. But at the end of the day, somebody has to pay the bill, which is something which I think the government is trying to persuade Mamta Banerjee at some point. Someone has to pay somewhere. So, Adi is saying it will be negative if those tax rates go back and we should wait for the GST. Would you agree with that or do you think for a while industry may have to grin and bear it? We may have to grin and bear it, that's another issue, but I completely agree with Adi that we should wait for GST. And I think there is a misplaced conception that GST will result in any loss of tax, because if you look at the concept behind it, it's really a tax on the entire GDP, 
and if it's properly administered, there is no reason why the government will not be able to augment its tax revenues at a very reasonable GST rate. So I agree with Adi completely that uh, this is not the time when the economy is in a slowdown, where there is a lack of confidence, where there is a need for investment, where monetary policy is tight. There is certainly a need to, to keep status quo in taxation and the government must look at the expenditure side of the, the budget. I have been saying that uh, for quite some time now and I believe that there is uh, the expenditure needs to be addressed. The railway budget is commendable to that extent that uh, it has addressed issues of user pay concept being slowly introduced and uh, I believe, uh, I agree with Adi completely in that. Uh, um, Mr. Kanoria and Mr. Godridge, this is a question for both of you. What I hear, what I'm gathering is that you're saying let there be reform but for others and not for us. Or at least if there is going to be reform for us, let it be postponed by whatever number of years it takes to get the GST through and so on. Now, uh, is that politically saleable? No, it's not a question of reform for us. The big problem today is GDP growth. The fiscal deficit has go gone up partly because GDP growth has slowed down. If you get policies in which accelerate GDP growth, your tax collections grow. It's well known that lower rates of taxes can get you higher collections. Also, uh, some of the mechanisms of making sure that people don't evade taxes are very important. And the big advantage of the GST introduction will be evasion of indirect taxes will go down dramatically. Collections will Adi, rise. Every effort Adi, should be made to get it in. If the states are worried about uh, uh, their collections, the, I would suggest that the center assures the state that they will make up for any loss the states suffer. There will be no loss. In fact, I, I would even advocate telling the states that if, if you have X loss, we'll give you 1.1 times X. Because there's not going to be a loss and 1.1 times zero is still zero. I think we must have some advanced thinking getting into getting the GST done. Mr. Mr. Godridge, any kind of expenditure compression is going to bring what the economists call the aggregate demand curve down. What that means for you all specifically is that less will be bought from you. Now I don't understand how if there is going to be less demand for your products is going to help uh, GDP growth. So oh. expenditure is an essential component in the current depressed demand uh, conditions that is necessary for the government to spend more. Uh, it's a different question that you know what you're spending on. But the fact remains that any kind of expenditure compression which is seen as a reform is going to hurt you. Also, Adi and, and Raju, before you answer uh, this question, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little perplexed by something, which is we will close this year with a fiscal deficit which will have blown apart by at least something like 100,000 crore, right? It's not a small amount of money, 100,000 crore. Now we all, we don't want it to, you know, be, you know, brought down to three percent of GDP, but we cannot have that profligacy. There are, we cannot do too much on expenditure side. We know that we cannot. We have to do some things on the revenue side. I am with you that reforms should be announced going forward, but it seems to me that neither of you want. You know, I'm perfectly happy for some taxes to go up on my personal basis. We need to cut the coat according to our cloth. We have stretched it. Let's get both of you to answer that. That, uh, that I don't think we should misplace the concept of reform with raising of taxes. Uh, at the end of the day, it has been proven that if the tax rates are moderate, compliance improves, tax collections improve. And uh, I think it would be wrong to think that, uh, you know, raising taxes or the need to raise taxes is actually a reform measure. Uh, I, I think that expenditure meant for social programs does fuel the economy, does help in increasing consumption, but misplaced expenditure doesn't do that. And we have to find a better delivery mechanism. The economic survey quite categorically states that if we are to find uh, a method to disperse subsidies, those subsidies should be done in a direct manner so that the leakages in the system can be avoided. 
And I think it's important to understand this point. And unless and until we sincerely start administrating or administering uh, subsidies, then we'll be doing injustice uh, uh, both to the people who need to receive subsidies and also to the taxpayers who are actually paying for those subsidies. Okay, Mr. Godre, just wanted to ask you one question before you leave us. At the end of the day, you can keep on having roadmaps for GST which are announced or roadmaps for the direct tax code for that matter. The crucial question will come down again to the credibility of it. There's no point saying I will do it next year and that deadline keeps getting pushed year after year. What can he say to assure people it will happen now on a particular timeline? I couldn't hear you. Sorry, Vikram. See now that question. Uh, I was just saying, what can we do to get an assurance that any timeline he announces on GST will actually be met? It seems to be a very flexible timeline. Yes, I think it's, it's a question. The states are worried. Some of the states are concerned. I've met the individual state finance ministers. They are worried that they will lose revenue. I think it's very clear. Most economists are agreed that GST will raise revenues both for the states and the center dramatically. Mainly because evasion of taxes becomes almost impossible when the GST is introduced. So I think the center has to take a, a, a stand that they're willing to compensate any possible losses the states would suffer after GSE, how to work it out, the formula need to be worked out and get everybody on the board very quickly. There has to be generosity from the center, there has to be uh, understanding from the states that this is a great economic reform, to my mind it will be the greatest economic reform India would have after the 1991 uh, reforms uh, instituted. Mr. Godrej, uh, can I just butt in here? Uh, the states are today not worried about compensation. They are essentially more worried about their, their federal power to tax. They want some sort of flexibility within the constitutional arrangement where their power to tax is not taken away. Uh, ha, ha. So the you haven't can spoken about that. that. Isn't that the real problem? Variable rates. You don't have to fix the exact rate for everything. In the beginning, you can start with a range of rates which will give them the flexibility and then bring that range down and come to a fixed rate within five years. Okay. Mr. Kanoria, on the roadmap to GST and direct tax score, if you want to quickly comment something, then we have to take a break. Uh, uh, how, what would well, you say about the roadmap? Also, given the fact that we are going to go to elections for two years from now, do you think any deadline on GST is credible when half the state, when Congress only owns a few states? I can only urge upon the political system to go for issue based, uh, you know, what is good for the country rather than, you know, get politics into this. So I would really hope for a very strong roadmap and a quick roadmap for GST. <laughs> as far as DTC is concerned, I do hope that uh, the finance minister will not do any cherry picking in the DTC code. Uh, the D, uh, DTC code, if adopted, should be adopted uh, comprehensively after having studied all the implications uh, to do with it. I think the reduction in tax rates proposed in DTC and doing incentives is a good idea, but there are other provisions which require clarification and the report submitted by the Ashwan Sina committee, I think one important point which needs to be understood is that the onus or the burden of proof should lie with the tax authorities and not with the taxpayer and that I think is very very critical to the tax administration system and I think people in this country would be very worried if the burden of proof shifts uh, to the taxpayer. All right, Mr. Kanoria, Mr. Godrej, thank you so much for joining us. Sanjeev Agha, do stay on with us. We just come back to you after this very quick break. So, Jeet Bhalla also joining us right here in Delhi. Um, and just to keep on telling you, remember this, uh, this very interesting contest that we are running on the side of the screen. So, you can take part in that and you can win a lot of money. Details and clues on NDTV.com as well. And if you want to follow the entire budget, one of the best places to do it, just download the NDTV Profit app. Uh, from uh, our, our website and from the App Store and you can track it. That's, that's the question which is running right now on the side of your screen. You can answer it and you can win a lot of money every single hour all through Budget Day. Do stay on with us. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes.